right grade tops let's go into protein synthesis now now that we have covered nucleic acids we understand what nucleic acids are let's do protein synthesis and obviously each each and every topic or subtopic that we do requires us to know a, a bit of uh, terminologies right so particularly on these uh, terminologies i'm going to give you right now i'm going to be focusing more on base triplets codons and anti-codons a lot because i'm, I'm going to be using them as we go through these processes of protein synthesis remember we are going to touch on the surface of what really happens but we must know these terms properly right starting with amino acids amino acids are building blocks for proteins remember if i have an amino acid let's just uh, pretend that amino acid will bond to another amino acid and then another one and another one through what we call a peptide bond so all amino acids will form peptide bonds these are peptide bonds so peptide bonds are bonds between amino acids and a long chain of amino acid is known as a polypeptide so these are some of the uh, examples of some of the uh, terms that we're going to be using a lot and then a base triplet three nitrogenous bases one after the other for example let's give an example of that if i have a dna strand here i have let's say i have a a t a okay nope a t a g c c and triple a now, how many base triplets are, are there we say that base triplets are nitrogenous bases one after the other how many three of them so how many base triplets do i have here i have one i have two i have three right these later on you'll see they'll they, they basically call for a certain amino acid so th that's what base, base triplets are and then we will see that the whole protein synthesis the process is divided into two parts transcription and translation the first stage of protein synthesis basically will be your transcription basically mrna is formed from dna that mRNA will carry the code for the desired protein. And then from there, the mRNA will exit via the nuclear pores of the, of the nucleus out, out of the nucleoplasm into the cytoplasm where it will go into the ribosomes. The ribosomes, remember, let's remind ourselves, are organelles that perform pro, uh, protein synthesis. Basically, translation will happen after that. That's, that's the second stage of protein synthesis amino acids combined to form a protein that polypeptide that we are talking about and then codon and anticodons codons are three nitrogenous bases on the on one after the other on mrna these are complementary to the triplets on dna so we get codons from rna and then anticodons are found where anticodons are found on tRNA these form a complementary uh, complementary uh, these are complementary to mRNA but we will get to that no hurry whatsoever now that we have a, a few terminologies covered let's get into it. protein synthesis we have approximately about 20 different amino acids that can build up different um, proteins basically depending on how a poly how they are arranged those different amino acids it builds a certain polypeptide so it basically depends on the sequence of the amino acids good the genes found in dna code for a specific protein so you're going to see we're going to be uh, going on a certain section of dna just to code for a certain protein the bonds between amino acids as I, as we discussed is as a peptide and then many of these amino acids bonded together are called peptide bonds then uh, base tri triplets base triplets determine which amino acid will be placed on onto uh, well basically the sequence of amino acids 
the right base templates for example let's use that example again one two three one two three one two three let's say we had a a t g c g a t g so these will basically at the end of the day be our different amino acid they'll call this code for a different amino acid this one a different one and this one a different one at the end of the day they will determine which amino acid has to bond with which one in which se sequence up until a polypeptide or a protein is built then like i discussed protein synthesis happens in two stages transcription and translation Transcription occurs mainly in the nucleus. Where in the nucleus? In the nuclear plasm. Yeah. Good. That's where it, that's where it happens. There by the nucleolus. Remember, uh, RNA is there made in the nucleolus, but basically you can say in the nucleus. Then translation occurs in the cytoplasm. That's outside the nucleus. Then let's get into transcription. Now transcription. At first, when you see all of this, it sounds like a lot of jargon. But if you concentrate, really, it is nothing. It is nothing, 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 nothing. Right. What, what, is, what, is, what is basically transcription? Transcription, we look for a certain section of... We're going to look for a certain section of the, DNA, of the DNA and basically transcribe it. So, I like teaching this by drawing. Great. Let's draw. So, transcription. So, let's see what happens during transcription. So, first things first. Uh, after cytokinesis in normal cells, right? Eukaryotic cells. After cytokinesis, remember after cytokinesis, we would have had, during mitosis, a chromosome. A chromosome like, the, like this one. And then after cytokinesis, it starts to relax. It starts to relax. It forms chromatin network, forms chromatin network all over the place, right? That chromatin network is still wound up. Now, the first step during interface, remember, this transcription, uh, uh, not, not, well, not during interface, this transcription uh, uh, phase needs to happen while your DNA is unwound. So, the first step, forget about uh, to the interface that's, that's DNA replication right the first step is that this DNA needs to unwind again it needs to unwind similar to re, uh, during replication right it needs to unwind 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 after it unwinds ne? number two it needs to unzip those are the most important parts so let's give it let's give an example let's say we we have a certain chromatin network and then it unwinds it unwinds here's it here's your pass it will unwinds now at that point it's unwinding then it needs to unzip remember this is unwinding then it needs to unzip unzipping basically opens a certain section it will open a certain section of the dna remember we're still dealing with the dna yeah? and then it continues so we've opened a certain section now just to for us to, 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 to be more realistic let's look at this one two three one two three one two three i'm gonna use three codons let's say up there and once yeah? one of these two will serve as a template let's use the bottom one let's say we have triple not triple a and then we have t a g and then we have c c g now this part let's say this, this, this is the code for our protein now this part after the ones obviously we have the complementary uh, that other side but we we're only working with one yeah we're not going to choose that one good now this part that is unzipped yeah? we are going to use it to transcribe right we are going to use it to transcribe what is transcribing we're going to use it to make mrna right with the help of certain enzymes such as your 
uh, such as a, a polymerase, for example, but you don't have, you don't need to know that. Free nucleotides from the nucleoplasm. What type of nucleotides? Now, I, I, I want us to be very specific, very specific here. Free RNA nucleotides. Okay? They are available and they will form the strand, the complementary strand to this template. Remember, in this case, we have one template, which is this section of DNA. So they are going to form the complementary strand, the complementary mRNA. So these ones, they will form the complementary mRNA strand. Right. So we had unwinding, then unzipping. Unzipping exposes the, the nucleotides for the DNA. Now, the free M uh, RNA nucleotides. Now, remember, we said that RNA does not have thymine. So as a result, what what is what what, what is the bond gonna be here? Okay, let's see. Let's see this. So we're gonna have uh, I'm just just wanting us with we're gonna have cytosine bonding with or not bonding, uh, basically forming a complement of C, this is gonna be G, and this is gonna be C. Right? C G A and G, sorry. That's G C G G C. Then let's come to the middle, to the middle base triplet. What's the complementary base triplets here? T is A. A now is supposed to be <clears throat> T, but remember in RNA we don't have thymine. We have uracil, so it's gonna be U. And then C, right? Then the last one is going to be U, U, and U. So basically, this is our mRNA strand. Now that we have this mRNA strand that is formed, that mRNA strand will now exit the nucleus to or through the nuclear pores. Yeah. So this mRNA strand that is that is created, it, form, it, it formed a complementary strand, and this one was our template. Remember, we only choose one template during transcription. Now, this mRNA strand is a complementary strand. Complementary mRNA right good now that is basically what happens during DNA transcription or RNA uh, basic transcribing RNA not DNA so let's let's go through it now now that we've, we we have drawn which we have drawn the whole section now a section of DNA number one is chosen and it will unwind ne? As a result, the weak hydrogen bonds between those nitrogenous bases will break. Between which nitrogenous bases? DNA nitrogenous base. As they break, then the DNA unzips. Yeah. This is only in a particular section. One, act, one strand will act as a template. The DNA template is used to form a complementary messenger RNA strand, an, an mRNA strand. Good. How is this formed? From the free RNA nucleotides in the nucleoplasm. mRNA will, that is formed, the complementary mRNA strand that is formed, will now contain the code for the protein that is needed to make the design, uh, uh, yeah, for the, for the protein, basically, that is needed by the cell. Three adjacent nitrogenous bases on the mRNA are known as codons. So we'll have codons. Né? These code for a particular amino acid. Ne? mRNA now is ready and it will move out of the nu uh, nucleus via the nuclear pore.
pores into the cytoplasm where it will attach to the ribosome and then all else begins. Now, this is basically what it would look like. So, recap. Free nucleotide, uh, there's unzipping, unwinding, and unzipping in that order. Then free nu nucleotides, which nucleotides? mRNA nucleotides basically build a complementary mRNA strand and it will leave and go where? Into the cytoplasm. And there we have our completed strand. So, just a bit, a bit, a bit of a practice uh, question to basically see if you understood what, a, what is a complementary mRNA strand. If you were given a DNA strand, yeah, and they say transcribe it into an mRNA strand, you would do the following. Since we have ACA, what, what is the complementary codon for the mRNA, uh, complementary mRNA codon? It will be U, because why U not T? Because this is an RNA strand. RNA does not have thymine. Good. Then G, then we have another U. Then on this one, because it's A, you have U, A, U. This one you'll have, yes, it will be, because we have RNA, A, and then U, and then this one will be C. Then you continue, G, A, A, then A, A, C. Then continue with the rest of the term. After you do that, do a quick recap on transcription and then we can move on. Then lastly, I would like you to label the following diagram. Use it. Obviously, ignore this, but it's a good exercise. Good. Ignore this one. Basically, what I don't want you to label is number one. You get to label everything else. Then that concludes our lesson on transcription.